500 years ago, Ferdinand Magellan began a historic journey to circumnavigate the globe. Simple, right? Not really, the explorer and his journey remained shrouded in contradictions. Magellan was Portuguese, but he sailed on behalf of Spain. He was a formidable commander, but his crew hated him. His expedition was the first to sail the world, but Magellan did not circumnavigate the globe himself. However, it seems evident that Ferdinand Magellan's expedition changed the world forever. His journey was the greatest sea voyage ever made and the most significant, says historian Lawrence Burgreen, author of Beyond the End of the World, The Terrifying Circumnavigation of Ferdinand Magellan. My name is Francisca and welcome to the Myths and Curiosities channel. Enjoy, leave your like, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so you don't miss any notifications. Brutal, conflict-inducing and courageous, Magellan turned a commercial trip into a chilling confrontation that spanned a vast world. At the beginning of his journey, his contemporaries suspected that it was impossible to navigate the entire world and feared that sea monsters and murderous fogs would punish anyone foolish enough to try. It felt like suicide to do something like that, says Burgreen. Ferdinand Magellan was born in 1480. When he was very young he was page to Queen Leonor, consort of King Joao II, a new life at the court of Lisbon. But Magellan was a young man with a desire for adventure and took part in a series of Portuguese voyages aimed at discovering and taking advantage of the lucrative spice routes in Africa and India. At the time, Portugal and Spain were engaged in an intense rivalry to see who could find and claim new territory and thus obtain the spices coveted by European aristocrats. In 1505, Magellan traveled to India, Malaya, and Indonesia. But his days in the service of Portugal were numbered, he was accused of illegal trade and fell out with D. Manueli, who refused a proposal for Magellan to discover a new spice route. Magellan was convinced that if he sailed west instead of east, across a strait in South America, he would be able to chart a new route to Indonesia and India. It was then that he abandoned his loyalty to Portugal and went to Spain, where he gained citizenship and the blessing of Charles V to make a voyage with five ships to the west. With this trip, Magellan could amass an enormous fortune and status. Charles V offered him a monopoly for 10 years over any route he could discover and a noble title. But Magellan was in an uncomfortable position in relation to his royal mission and the crew, who were mostly Spanish. The Castilians resented the fact that they sailed under the orders of a Portuguese commander, and to the Portuguese Magellan was a traitor, writes historian Lincoln Payne. After a wintry climate forced the ships to wait for months in what is now Argentina, Magellan's crew mutinied. A ship has sunk, another abandoned the expedition completely and returned to Spain. The commander struggled to regain control of his men, but when he did, the repercussions were swift and severe. Magellan ordered the quartering and decapitation of some of the mutineers, others were abandoned or forced to work. The expedition continued and Magellan managed to navigate a treacherous passage that now bears a name that honors him, the Strait of Magellan. But the problems weren't over yet. As the expedition crossed the Pacific Ocean, the food rotted and scurvy and famine struck the crew. Magalhães and his men managed to reach a place believed to be Guam, where they killed indigenous people and burned their homes, punishment for stealing a small boat. A month later, the expedition arrived in the Philippines. To the crew's surprise, Enrique, a slave that Magalhães had bought before the voyage, could understand and speak the language of the indigenous people. That is, Enrique was probably raised in the region before he was enslaved, making him, not Magellan, the first person to circumnavigate the globe. Magellan wasted no time in claiming the Philippines on behalf of Spain, but his involvement in what Bergring calls unnecessary warfare was his undoing. He was not defeated by natural forces, says Bergring. Magellan demanded that the local people of Mictan convert to Christianity and became involved in a rivalry between Humabon and Lapulapu, two local chiefs. On April 27, 1521, during an attack on the people of Lapulapu, Magellan was killed by a poisonous arrow. 
they suddenly attacked him with spears of iron and bamboo, wrote Antonio Pigafetta, an Italian scholar who accompanied the expedition to kill our mirror, our light, our comfort, and our true guide. But the crew abandoned the body, an indication of their relationship with the ruthless leader. After Magellan's death, the crew continued with the only ship that remained, commanded by Juan Sebastian Elcano, a Basque, and returned to Spain in September 1522. Along the way, they found a new ocean, mapped new routes for trade, European Union, and paved the way for modern globalism. 60,000 miles later, and after 80% of those involved had lost their lives, the expedition managed to prove that the globe could be circumnavigated and opened the door to the European colonization of the New World in the name of commerce. And so a legend was born. In 1989, Magellan's name traveled to Venus. During a five-year journey, NASA's Magellanic spacecraft captured images of the planet before destroying itself in its atmosphere. Magellan should not be seen as the beginning of the history of the Philippines, but rather as an event in a history that still needs to be written and rewritten for a new generation. For the indigenous peoples encountered by Magellan and his crew, the explorer's arrival brought with it a new era of conquest, Christianization and colonization. Lapu-Lapu, the ruler of Mictan whose forces killed Magellan, is often credited with the explorer's death. Lapu-Lapu has become a national hero in the Philippines. Although Lapu-Lapu probably did not do the deed, he is widely celebrated as a symbol of Filipino resistance and pride. What did you think of the story of Ferdinand Magellan? Tell me here in the comments. Enjoy, leave your thumbs up and share this video so that your friends also know this incredible story. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.